I'm Vanessa Torlano. And I'm Ala Shapiro, and this mm -hmm. is... <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought that's how it went. I thought it was the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess this episode is Alicia Wright. Hi. Hi, Alicia. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to Butcher. Hey, you need a drink. It's yeah, a you need a drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, are we drinking, drink. Jeanette? All right, what is it? This is a cantaloupe lilac Collins it's made delicious. with. Oh, no. um, it's a cantaloupe lilac citrus uh, simple syrup. And Destor Gin, my favorite, and your Juniper Rose Kombucha. Nice. It's awesome. really lovely and fragrant and delicious. It's really nice. It's got a nice, like, smooth full mouth thing going on. Like, it's like... It's kind of like it's candy. Like, it's a lilac, well, yeah. like, really light on top, and it kind of, like, floats on the top, and then the booch sort of, like, just brings it and wraps it all together. Cool. So, Alicia, tell us a little bit about what you do here in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm a yoga teacher. Um, I'm a mom. I manage Mound Street Yoga, and I teach um, for Alignment Yoga. What's Alignment Yoga? So I met Scott Anderson, and he um, has founded Alignment Yoga, which is this really brilliant path. It really creates an awareness of downregulation, of living more in that calm nervous system, really being aware of where you are, in your life and um, waking up to new possibility. I think it's a couple years ago we had all those protests here at the Capitol during the whole um, Scott Walker teacher thing going on. Yeah. And I know that you actually would go down to the Capitol and lead yoga classes and meditation during all the chaos. Yeah. What was that experience like? Because there's people going crazy all around and it's full of people and there's drumming and, you know, people were yeah. pissed and. People were pissed. Yeah. It was great. Um, so when you look at the whole school, not to like dive off into a tangent here, but when you really look at yoga, the asana, the physical part, is just one limb. It's just one part. And the part that I find as I keep practicing more and more tr intriguing mm -hmm. is um, this limb of pratyahara, of how you blend what's going on internally with what's happening externally in your world. And I think the protest was such a great example of, for me personally, to be able to go sit in that anger and really just stay true to who I was. Mm -hmm. And to practice and to really sit and be mindful of all this anger and all of these mixed feelings coming up mm -hmm. and just sit and embody that and still be soft and gentle and show compassion inside. Because there's another side to what was happening and when I walked away, I would always have all these thoughts going through. And I think the biggest thought that came to me when I walked away was like, why can't we have a party like this when everything's good? Right. Yeah. yeah. You know? yeah, like, yeah why totally. can't we have all these drums playing? Why can't we take over the world? Because we're happy. Mm -hmm. Not because yeah. we're pissed off. Yeah. And so to go and sit there and be able to just feel that was really important, I think. When people are protesting or when people are negative against what they don't want, they're often saying the exact words of what they don't want. So they're right. saying the, the what they don't want over and over and over, thus like giving power to those words. Like, right. I don't, I mean, say no to war, say yeah. no to war, yeah. say no to war. You're just saying, say war, them. say war, mm -hmm. say war. You're, yeah, you're, you're, you're repeating, repeating those yeah, words. You're not just saying... You, you know, like, yeah. just taking those yeah. words and turning them in a different way. Were those receptive that you had in your meditation space? Were they receptive to how you were training, like, how or, or leading, I should say, you know? It was really interesting. Um, a couple of us would just go sit every night, and then it got bigger and bigger and bigger, mm -hmm. and more and more people would sit. And I have no idea if they were even part of a meditation community. I think, you know, when people were spending the night, we would just go at, like, 7 and sit till 10. And we would just sit and sit, and then the you know line got bigger and bigger, you know. And there were a couple times we were doing yoga, and that energy around you was really huge. And yeah. so to stay really grounded and present in yourself, and and be reminded of your own energy, and not to suck in all that outward energy, 
and there were people who were rude, like, your mat's taking up all the space, and we want to be by the drums. they're party and, poopers. You know? Like, <laughs> they're just drums, you know? Yeah, they're yeah, just right. beating yeah. on a... I think it's very like, cool that you that it became a larger mass of people that you know became yeah. comfortable with that because it is terrifying. A lot of people yeah. have a really hard time with like isolating their like personal space and their brain space and etc. And to see people doing that amidst that chaos, I think that's pretty rad. That you know it grew bigger yeah. and bigger. And I'm not saying that you just have to do physical postures to find yoga. You know, that's just a tool. Yeah. Right. I think it's just a path. Right. Ride your bike. Right. Knit. Yeah. What, you know, do something you love. <laughs> while riding your bike. Knit while riding your but bike. But everyone has but, these yeah. passions, and we feel like right. we have yeah. to have this one way of doing it. And one size, as Scott always says, it's so brilliant. One size doesn't fit all. Right. Yeah. 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 That's what I really love to yeah. do. Totally. Everybody's you know, you love thing. to make art. I don't have time to be present with making art. And let that be your path. I think, like, one of the ways, like, you know, like we're all moms, we all have kids, and that's like one for me personally. Like that is one of the biggest ways of taking what you're saying and bringing it into my everyday life. Is like when my kids are driving me to the point of insanity, is to like remember that and be like, okay, I can still be present and still deal with all of this without yeah. compromising mm-hmm. or bringing myself to that level of insanity. I notice as a parent when. <laughs> My kids piss me so off the most. Right, right. <laughs> well, you know, like we when my all kids have children here. <laughs> piss me off the most is when my mind isn't with them. Like it's not about where you're going. It's about being in that moment. Mm-hmm. Like it's about the process. It's about being right there the whole time. One thing I've noticed about you that is so nice and refreshing. You're so centered and you're focused on your, your spiritual practice. And also you don't mind taking a drink sometimes or you don't yeah. mind having a smoke sometimes. Yeah. Why are you that such was, a rad yogi? Yeah. I know. I your your nice party lost yeah. your party lifestyle, Alicia. Know, What's up with crazy that? Party lifestyle is a yogi. <laughs> I really find that it's a path and it's different for everyone and for some people a raw clean diet works um for me the path is about honesty and really being who i am so i think where yoga gets like it it can get culty and it can get in my mind scary is when you list a set of rules like the oh, Ten yeah. Commandments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. These are the rules no, of yoga. Yeah. And we follow those. Again, one size doesn't fit yeah. all. For no. me, a booch cocktail is great. A smoke once in a while is great. That's my path. Yeah. My path yeah. is completely different than the 20 people's path that came to my class. Right. Right. And my, you know, what but I'm inspired to do is say, what the hell's your path? But right. you honor take it. it. Like, yeah. that's the like, great take thing about your path. path. Yeah. And run path, with it. And sure. have faith that everything around you, to be grounded in your space, and everything's gonna work out. Yeah. Everything, the world's gonna take care of you. Just find your path. Anyway. So, just so you know, you can go and check Alicia out as a yoga teacher. She's really awesome because she's not like all. <laughs> she's really down to earth. And if you don't want to do something, it's really awesome because she's just like whatever. Just lay there, take a nap. It's fine. That's your path. And if you want to just be woo, ha, ha, woo, you can do that too. You can even make sound effects in class. Yes. Like, oh, too ha, ha, ha. Like, yeah. Her voice will guide you. Yeah, <laughs> my voice will guide you. <laughs> yeah. America, the birthday situation has gotten out of control. Birthday cakes, birthday presents, birthday dinners, birthday calls, birthday... On your birthday in the Crescent City, it is customary to pin a dollar to your shirt so strangers will give you money. It's an excuse to go wild. Give me a dollar, lady, because it's my birthday. We need to take a note from the Chinese and celebrate everyone's birthday on the same day. We'll call it Christmas. I'm Bill Chuckers. Always a pleasure. This has been another episode of Booch and Bitch. Thank you for joining us. Not good or yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cheers, ladies. <laughs>